Hello! This video is an introduction to my series called Anarchist Book Club, the byline of which is black and red, as coined by my comrade Thoughtslime just to give credit where it's due. The purpose of this series is to analyse and interpret books that I consider important for anarchists. They won't all be works of anarchist theory. Over time in this series I'll be looking at books by anarchists that are not directly or specifically about anarchism itself, like Manufacturing Consent and Debt. I'll also be looking at works that are not by anarchists or about anarchism, but are about subjects which are of interest to anarchists, like Blacklisted and The New Jim Crow. Though I will be looking at a lot of anarchist theory in this series. I plan to cover Rocker, Kropotkin, Goldman and Malatesta to begin with, and then hopefully between now and then I will have received a decent amount of feedback about other anarchist thinkers people most want me to cover, and also other books that are of interest to anarchists that folks are interested in me looking at. I'm even open to maybe covering some fiction in this series at some point in the future. Stuff like News From Nowhere by William Morris, The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin, and The Mars Trilogy by Kim Stanley Robinson. The videos in this series will be deep dives, and as such they will be long. I'll be looking at these books in depth, quoting from them heavily, and then adding a lot of my own thoughts to clarify, expand upon, and interpret them. I didn't call this series Anarchist Book Club because I expect anyone to read the books before watching the videos. I called it that because I want this series to cover all the bases regarding the fundamentals of anarchism, and thus it's kind of the ABCs of anarchism. Do you get it? And yes, I am aware that there is a book called Now and After the ABC of Communist Anarchism by Alexander Berkman, which is commonly referred to as the ABC of Anarchism, and yes I would consider covering that book if that is one that people want me to. I have designed the series so that these videos will be coherent and potentially useful for everyone. Whether you've read the book already, plan to read it in the future, or don't have any intention of ever reading it. The only thing I will be assuming of viewers of the series is that either you've watched my video A Short Glossary of Anarchist Terms, or you didn't watch it because you're already adequately familiar with the basics of anarchism and socialism. One thing I do need to make people aware of about this series is that when covering books written a decent amount of time in the past, in some cases I will be changing certain wording, because language changes over time, and I have a very pragmatic attitude towards this series. These videos are for a modern audience, and as such, some of the wording used in books written long enough ago is not the way we phrase such things today. But while I will be replacing some outdated terms, I will never do so in a way that changes the meaning of what is being said. Indeed, my very intention in changing such words is to preserve the meaning, as using the original wording may result in misunderstandings and just lack of understanding for people today. Here's an example, albeit this one's a fairly small and inconsequential one. Throughout the book Anarcho-Syndicalism by Rudolf Rocker, Rocker uses the term national states in the same way that we in modern parlance use nation states. So it just makes sense to me to switch out what a modern audience looks at as a rather clunky way of saying something with a more fluid up-to-date term. One of the downsides of this series is that all book excerpts are read by me, which means there's no change in voice to indicate going from me providing my own thoughts to me reading from the book, and thus the only way to know that this is happening is visually. And for me, I like being able to have YouTube videos on kind of in the background, only looking at them occasionally but listening all the time and unfortunately you're not going to be able to engage with this series in that way. Which is regrettable, especially given the length of the videos, but there is so much reading from the books that asking other people to do it instead of me is just unworkable and infeasible. It's a ton of work, you know, it takes hours and hours to record, and I'm just not comfortable asking people to do that for me unless I was paying them to do so, and I can't afford that option. Okay, well I think that's all I wanted to say in this introduction. I hope you enjoy the videos in this series. Please provide feedback on them. As I said before, my approach here is pragmatic. The value of these videos is in their utility as information sources, and that can be increased and improved through viewer feedback. In this series, I will be using a consistent text color system, which I will now explain. When there is black text on screen, that's an excerpt from the book which I am reading verbatim. When there is red text on screen, that's an excerpt from the book that I am referencing or alluding to while talking in my own words. When there is blue text on screen, that is something that is not from the book, it's something that I have written myself. Thanks for watching, comrades and potential comrades, and all there is left to do now is this awkward segue into the first entry in the series. Bye.